Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Patchwork, an abstract tile laying game that supports two players. It's for ages 8 and up, and the average play time is about 30 minutes. So Patchwork, in the general sense, is the process of taking these uh, patches of varying designs and splicing them together onto like a larger quilt or onto a piece of clothing. And this game basically follows that mindset. Players will be picking up these pieces and putting them onto their quilt with the intent on filling it up as much as they can. They'll also be earning buttons along the way. Not only do these buttons provide them with the currency they need to buy more pieces, but they also provide them with victory points. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the components and see how the game is played. Okay, so as far as your components are concerned, I figured the best way to explain the components would be to also explain game setup at the same time. That way you can see how they relate to one another, because as you can see, the uh, board is kind of set up in a weird fashion. So each player receives one of these boards here. Players will be taking these pieces here and putting them onto their board, trying to fill it up. Players also will receive a matching time token. There's a green one here for that and a yellow one here for that. They're placed on this rectangular space, and players will be moving around this time board like so, trying to make their way to the center. Now you'll also see these one by one patch tiles. You want to put them right on top of their appropriate spaces on the time board here, and I'll explain what they do later. You'll also want to give each player five of these buttons. This acts as the currency in the game. There's more in the box and you can also upgrade if you want to. So if you have like ten buttons uh, of these, uh, ten of these smaller buttons, you can trade them in for like this ten button piece here. Um, as far as the other stuff is concerned, you have a 7x7 seven seven bonus tile and the first player to put a 7x7 seven seven grid um, on their board will receive this and they'll earn some victory points at the end of the game. And finally, you want to take all of these different pieces here and put them in an oval or circle pattern around the time board. There's a reason for doing that. And you'll also want to locate the two button one time uh, piece here and then put this white pawn right after that as the starting marker. And I'll explain how all of that works in a minute. But in a nutshell, that's how you set up the game. Okay, so in most other games, players will alternate turns. Not in this game. Whoever's furthest back on the time track, or if they're on the same space, whoever's on top will end up going next. It's a little similar to Tokaido, if you've ever played that board game. So whoever's furthest back will end up going next. Um, now, if it's the beginning of the game, obviously they're on the same space, so you can decide who you want to go first. Now, on a player's turn, um, they can do one of two things. So the first thing a player can do on their turn is advance and receive buttons. It's a very simple process. You pick up your time token, wherever it is, and put it in front of your opponent's piece. And then you receive buttons equal to the number of spaces you moved. So just for example, let's say that this green one was here and this yellow one wanted to take that action. He'd move one, two, three, four. Again, the space in front of his opponent, like so. And then he'd receive one, two, three, four four buttons from the supply, and that would end their turn. Now the second thing a player could do on their turn is take and place a patch. Now there's multiple steps involved with that. The active player will go ahead and take a look at the three next pieces in order. Now this is clockwise order, not counterclockwise order. So this pawn will be moving around the oval or circle like this. So this player is going to take a look at the first three pieces, not the ones behind them, but the ones in front, and uh, choose one to purchase. Now one thing you have to keep in mind is that you may not be able to afford all of the pieces that are in front of you. For example, here's one of the three pieces that are available. And you can see the uh, numbers here. There's seven buttons and two time. Seven buttons is the number of buttons that the player needs in order to place it in the first place. And this is the amount of time it would take to actually place that piece. Now this player, this green player, does not have seven buttons. So he could not place this piece if he wanted to. Same thing with this one here. This one requires eight buttons and six time. He doesn't have eight buttons as currency to buy this, so he can't place it either. The third and final one that he could choose is this one here. Now he could place this one. It has four buttons and two time. So he's going to go ahead and choose that one. He's going to return four of his buttons to the supply like so, and he's going to place it onto his grid in any orientation he wants to. It doesn't matter which side, they're the same side. 
Uh, so we're just going to place it like that. Okay, And then you're going to pick up the pawn and put it in its place. That way the next player, uh, whoever that ends up being, because again, next player is the person that is furthest back on the track, will go next. Now the third and or the last thing that the player will do on their turn is take a look at the amount of time it took to actually place that piece in the first place. You'll move your time piece up the number of uh, time listed on that particular piece. In this case, it's two, so the green player would move their time piece up by two spaces, one, two. Now, because the green is now in front of yellow, yellow would get to go next. All right, so there's a few other things to note. Whenever players move their time piece around the time board, they'll pass some special spaces. There are these blue buttons here, and there are these um, one by one leather patches here. Whenever a player passes one of these blue buttons like so, they'll get to collect a number of buttons equal to uh, the number of buttons listed on their board. So for example, uh, this piece has two buttons on it, this piece has two buttons on it, there's no other pieces on Green's board right now that has buttons, so he gets to collect four buttons from the supply and he can add that to his uh, overall pull. The other thing that a player could get while moving up this track, the first player to cross one of these leather patches that are sitting here will get to collect it and they have to place it immediately. So this player here, if Green had passed that, could place it here like so to fill this little hole here. Okay, so with regard to the special 7x7 seven seven tile, basically, whenever a player manages to create a 7x7 seven seven grid on their quilt, uh, they'll get this tile immediately. That's worth 7 points at the end of the game. So, for example, let's say it is Yellow's turn. He decides to do the take and place a patch action. He pays 3 buttons in order to get this tile here. It's worth 3 buttons. And he's going to place it uh, something like this and that creates a 7x7 seven seven grid. He gets the 7x7 seven seven special tile, and then that earns him 7 victory points at the end of the game. So this will continue with players taking turns until both of these time tokens reach the very center. At that point, players will calculate their final score. And again, this is just for example purposes. It won't actually look this bad. The quilt should be a little bit more filled up than what it is. Uh, but players will go ahead and count the number of buttons that they have left, Add the special tile if they have it, again that's 7 points, and then subtract 2 points for every empty space on their quilt. And then the player with the most points at that point will win the game. Alright, so there you have it, a very brief look at patchwork. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual. This was just a brief overview so that you can get an idea of how the game is played. As far as what I thought about it, I think it's an excellent game. Uh, there's a few different strategies you can employ. Uh, one player might decide to get these uh, pieces here with a lot of buttons on them. That way, whenever they pass those button spaces on the time board, they can collect a lot of buttons. And not only does that earn them a lot of victory points at the end of the game, but it also gives them more options because some of these pieces are very expensive to buy. So some players may decide to go the button route and try and place as many buttons as possible onto their quilt. Other players might go the other route. They may not care so much about the amount of buttons that might be on their pieces. Instead, they might just go for the cheapest options with the hopes of filling up their quilt as quickly as possible. So, despite how easy the game is to play, players still can incorporate a lot of different strategies on how they decide to fill up their quilt. Um, as far as the components are concerned, like the pieces are fantastic, very colorful. Um, there's, there's no brittle pieces anywhere, they're, they're pretty solid. My only complaint is the fact that the box, or the game, does not come with baggies. Uh, there's only one baggie, and it's meant to hold the pawn and the two time pieces. But as far as everything else, like these little pieces here uh, and all the buttons, there's no baggie for those. So I think uh, a little more work could have been done to help organize some of the pieces in the box. It's a minor complaint, but I'm just someone that prefers to have baggies with the games that they play. But other than that, I think this game is fantastic. So if you can find it for pretty cheap, go pick it up. So with that being said, um, if you want to check out my full review, you can at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. If you haven't already, subscribed to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.